Okay, so on this picture today, I'm going to create a bit of a kind of rocky mountain scene. I'm going to start by adding some blue tones at the top. And I'm just going to fade them down a little bit, quite simply. And I can soften that up by using the Gaussian Blur. And I might decide that I want to move it up a little bit, actually. So I'll just adjust it by using the selection tool up here. And what I'm going to do is create a different layer. And I'm going to start introducing some more grayed, kind of darker blues, or the distant kind of forms. So I'm going to change the brush to a medium brush. So I'm just going to turn the opacity of the layer down. I've got the opacity of the brush on full. And now I can just create some kind of mountainous shapes. Just use my imagination a little bit, start to play around. So I might as well bring it down into the foreground. It's going to be covered by other things, this in the foreground eventually, but I might as well just fill it in for now. So I'm going to create some sort of kind of dramatic spikes in the landscape, perhaps. Some distant kind of rock formations. I'm not going to worry about too much of the detail just at this point. I'm just going to create a bit of a sense of things going off over there in the far distance. And I may as well imagine how it goes down towards the, the horizon point, even if I obscure it with other things, I may as well complete the sense in my mind's eye just by placing some of it in. Okay, so there may be things that are more over here and more over there, but it's going to be obscured by the next layer that I create. I have the opacity on full. I'm going to turn the opacity of the brush down this time. So I want to create some things that go in front of the shapes in the background. In fact, it might be a bit too dark for these shapes, so let's go over it with a slightly lighter colour. Maybe a bit more greyed out. I'm also going to go over these structures with more of an earthy tone, because the blues really are for the very distant form. So Although I want these to be distant, they're not going to be as distant as some of the other forms. So there will be some browns and maybe some greens in places that I'm going to add in as well. Okay, and I'm not going to get bogged down in too much of the detail just for now. I just want to start placing some structures in, obscuring different parts and getting a sense for some kind of lay of the land. So I might as well just fill in some of this just to get rid of that strange awkwardness at the bottom. Okay, I will go back over these layers and refine them. So I'm just getting some of them blocked in for now. I'm going to move to a darker version. I will go over these nearer layers with earthier colours, like I say, but I just need to start mapping in where I want features to be. So I'm still on the kind of blues, but I'm getting darker and a bit more greyed out. So it's almost creating a kind of warmer effect as it gets closer. For anyone that's been watching my videos for a period of time and is subscribed, you'll know that recently I've been doing some interactive paintings and I do tend to return, intend to return to those, but I just feel like I, I wanted a, a bit of a break. And I was also having requests from people who were supporting me over at Patreon to do some more of these tutorial type videos. And to be honest, with a bit of a break from them, I'd start to get a bit of an appetite for coming back and doing these. So I'm quite happy to start alternating from now on between the two styles of videos and at the moment and considering doing on one week a tutorial like this so a more traditional style lesson where I present lessons on how to construct certain types of landscapes or elements or something along those lines perhaps even the human body at a later point and then on the alternate week I'll present something that's a bit more like my traditional my uh, my style my imagination with the help of my subscribers and viewers who give me suggestions about how to uh, proceed with it so that's the interactive element so i'm just making this up really it's not a specific landscape i just want to show how you can create an effect with different layers and what i'm going to do on the foreground layer is i'm going to introduce some warmer kind of brown colours but more of a, a greyed out tone as well. So I'm going to turn the opacity of the brush down and just start to block in some suggestions of 
texture going on in these forms as well. So I'm just using the, the fact that it's a, a vertical kind of rock face. I'm not going to get massively into detail on this. It's just creating a feel for that type of environment. So get some areas where you get blocks that are less broken. Other areas perhaps where it's more fragmented. Oh, maybe a bit more of a grey version. So I'm going to vary up the, the colours and the textures a little bit. And same on the side, I want to introduce some more variety because when it gets a lot closer, you will see more things going on, certainly. Maybe a bit more grey in areas too. So I'm trying to keep this fairly loose, fairly quick. I'm more interested in the effect than I am all the tiny little details perhaps. So I'm imagining that a light source is coming from over here somewhere. So I'm going to have more light hitting it in this region. Like I say, so the light's coming from somewhere over here maybe. We're going to have just some of the top details of here being impacted a bit more by the, the light as well, but more apparent in this region. You notice I'm just using the uh, standard kind of brushes. There are textured brushes that perhaps might be useful for this type of thing, but I do like to be able to do things manually. If you can achieve the effect through your own endeavor, your own effort, and you know how to do that, then I think it stands you in good stead. And then maybe later on you can use shortcuts and brush tools. But I do think it's important to try and learn how to do it by your own hand as well. I think if you become over-reliant upon brush sets that you get, that other people have created, then I think that you're missing out on learning opportunities. So I do try and do things as much by my own hand as possible. I always find it much more satisfying if I've created every mark and every gesture, every bit of texture myself somehow. It can be a book more laborious and to be honest you can make more mistakes that way but I do enjoy the process more when I do that. I'm more satisfied with the end result too. So you can put the dashes and the blobs and the little marks exactly where you want them rather than a brush texture kind of determining that for you. So I may go for a lighter colour in places, just a touch of it. If I go too much in the reflective kind of colours, then it's going to start looking like it's a snowy, mountainous landscape, which is maybe okay, but I'm thinking more towards the earthier tones. I'm thinking greens down here as well. In fact, I'm going to go to the background area there, and I'm just going to, I might go for that colour actually. So I'm going to select the colour that's immediately behind that feature and start using it to give a suggestion of things going off on those mountains too. Just here and there. even the ones in the, the very far distance might just have a hint of something going on. I don't want to get really bogged down in trying to do detail on every layer because it really would be subtle in the far distance. In fact, I've not quite established the, the final look for those distant mountains. So I'm going to hold back on that and just do a bit more in these areas. Now I've still got that blue color selected, but I think it might be quite useful to add a bit more of the blue color to these areas too. Again, I want to vary up the kind of the colour range in these closer mountains. So I definitely want some warmer colours, the kind of browns and greys, but some of the blue introduced into this as well is, is quite a nice thing. So I'm going to create another layer and I'm, I'm starting to think that really I'd like to add some green into the piece. So the way that I'm going to start doing that is maybe about having a very dark version initially. So I'm going to go to my medium airbrush and I'm going to start introducing some darker suggestions of things in here as well. I'm not being too precious about this. In fact, I'm going to blur it in slightly. And then I can start working into it again. I'm going to select like a lighter. I've already got a green here, in fact. So let's test that. I quite like that green. It's quite a, a rich kind of olivey. It's got a bit of yellow in there as well. 
I'm just going to start playing around with the idea that it, it's just going to start catching areas of the light coming through and you'll start to see more things in the foreground. Again, it's on a separate layer, so I can always adjust this as a whole layer. Keeping the whole image pretty loose, I'm more interested in the effect than I am lots and lots of detail, to be honest. And then maybe what I can do is start to build in some suggestions of trees and kind of objects. Being quite loose with this, quite rough. I'm just because I'm not overly worried about the detail, I'm just creating an effect. So I'm just playing around a little bit, see what works. I'm okay with some maybe suggestions of like, um, pine trees sticking up. Just kind of maybe suggesting some of the taller, spiky kind of things sticking up in places. But because I'm keeping it quite loose, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to stress too much about that. I guess if you wanted to start to refine it, then you'd really get into the detail of the shapes of the trees and things like that. But I just kind of want a, an effect. So if you kind of squint your eyes or look at it from a slightly more distant, it's going to look suggestive of the kind of landscape. So I can suggest some of the things that might be just sticking up in places a little bit. For this particular piece, I'm quite happy with that level of looseness. So I'm going to perhaps just by pressing on lightly start to suggest some more distant kind of ranges of trees or things. And I may also just bring in a bit more of a suggestion light is catching on certain areas and illuminating them perhaps further in the distance not too much so there might be patches of grass or things over here that are just lit up a bit more maybe it's catching the top of a little bit of a hill here in fact to change what i was initially planning like so Just elements where it's really quite vibrant there as well. Like so. so I'm going to select that colour and maybe I can introduce the notion that there's other kind of details, other little mountain things going off in the distance too, aside from that. So now I can go on to one of the main, more closer to mountain ranges. And I can just sharpen up some of these details, just soften it slightly because I'm happy for certain things to give a suggestion that there's a few different layers here. So by turning the opacity down and going over it, I can create a sense that there's more than one layer going on here. So you, you've instantly created a little area there that looks more distant than the next one and more distant than the one next to that. And that's mainly achieved by doing it in different layers of opacity. Again, I'm going to pick that background colour and just use it to start adding a bit, a bit more texture into those distant mountains, just a little bit here and there. Go to my more foreground one this time. I'm going to pick the darkest area of it and just use that to start adding some extra details in there too. Again, I'm just going to pick the lighter colours, just start to build in some more of these textured bits where the light hits, maybe. Start to fine tune a little bit. I mean, there's no right and wrong with this. There's no picture I'm copying from. So sometimes things appear better than other times. So you just got to sometimes play until it kind of looks right to your own, your own eye a little bit. 
So I'll start going to add a little bit more in terms of broken texture in there as well. You'll get less of that in the distant ones, but in a slightly more foreground area, you're going to have smaller breaks and fragments in the texture. But again, I'm not going into a massive amount of detail. I'm just giving a suggestion of this kind of thing really for this piece. Sometimes I'll go into more detail. Sometimes I just want to do a bit more like a, a speed painting like this. So I might spend half an hour on it, an hour on it or something, just to create the effect. So you can see how an effect might be constructed. And then other times I might want to go to town and really get deeper into a picture as well. So I'm going back to the foreground layer, finding some darker greens again, just starting to pick out some of the real kind of dark greens as well. to keep it nice quick relatively easy sometimes the effects are not always straightforward but sometimes things just fall into place a little bit easier than others i think until you can achieve the effect then there's no point getting bogged down in the details anyway i think you just need to practice the the rougher finish until the effect is right and then you can really focus down onto the the little details so it doesn't matter how detailed you go if the effect isn't working. So I'm just concentrating on the effect and then that's something that people can have a go at if you're feeling you want to. And then once you're feeling that the effect is achieved, then sure, spend some time just working into the details then afterwards. But this is a really quick piece. Often if I'm doing a full painting, I would happily spend 30 hours on a, on a piece of work, but we're talking about 30 minutes. So it really isn't a finished piece as such, it's just playing around with a, a general look. So I'm gonna go to some more kind of brown colors here and I want to begin introducing them into some of these areas. Just to maybe subdue slightly the, the greens in areas where it sort of blends into the mountain a little bit. Like so. And what I'll need to do now is if I go to the very background, the sky. Um, I almost quite like it when I take away that layer. In fact, something seems to work maybe a touch better. So what I could consider doing is just lifting that layer off a little bit. And you see when it's lower and when it's higher. So if I take it back to what it was, which is like that, and I feel I want to just tweak it and lift it a little bit. It lets a bit more light through into the scene and it just seems to work a little bit better. And what I'd also like to do on that layer is just go to the blues, but go for a real white version and just subtly with a soft airbrush, add a hint of wispy bits of cloud here and there. I'm turning the opacity really down for this. Just, just break up that blue a little bit because it just looks a little bit unrealistically kind of unfeatured, too flat. So just some hints of maybe some broken it's a cloud coming in there. Nothing distinct, nothing too apparent, but just a, a suggestion of something maybe. Maybe a band of wispy bits of cloud coming in, maybe like that. And also, maybe if I go onto another layer, just occurred to me, if I go down to here, I could maybe build in a bit more of a suggestion of clouds and things coming into this area. Maybe that's a bit strong, slightly less than that. Maybe just slightly darker. And on that basis, I might introduce some onto this layer too. So it could be spilling out into this area. Some low-lying mist, maybe, starting to encroach into the landscape. Because it is very high up. Um, and maybe the, the clouds and the mist is sort of generally spreading a little bit more. I don't know. So just some slight suggestion of cloud creeping into this area, perhaps quite high up here. Not too much, just a, a faint suggestion of it, or perhaps up there. Uh, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time just adding a few more highlights in. Maybe use the brown again, a more greyed out version. Just, I'd like to see just little sections of it pop out a little bit more. Okay, that's last adjustment. 
I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, like I say, it's a relatively quick study, just playing around with atmosphere, the general sense of where to place things and what kind of colour schemes to create the overall effects, but the, the details are not there. It's not the sharpest of pictures, but I just wanted to get the feel of it right. I hope this has been interesting and useful to follow along with or to learn something from. If you want to see more of this type of content, then please subscribe to my channel, look through the playlist. Like I say, next week I shall be returning to the interactive project for a week weekend and then the week after I shall do another traditional style um, tutorial like this maybe something a bit more in depth next time I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people that are supporting me over on my patreon page if you want to learn more about that there is a link down in the description for those people that are supporting me over at patreon they can get access to other things apart from the videos like a full resolution downloads of the images the full layered files and other things like that too anyway I hope you've enjoyed watching I shall catch you back here again See you later.